Welcome to the Common Man Football Show. My name is James Coburn, and today's episode, we're talking about Tavon Austin. Uh, this was a question submitted uh, by Blasphemous HDTVM. Uh, he basically requested a Tavon Austin video, and yeah, I think uh, we could do a Tavon Austin video. Um, you know, this might actually fall into the NFL draft bust section, maybe, kind of. I think so. Uh, but I definitely think that Tavon Austin is a guy uh, where he is another player that to me kind of everything that people criticize about the draft process is Tavon Austin. And uh, basically, you know, wide receiver is, you know, barely considered a top wide receiver. And then he runs 4-3 at the combine and then shoots up draft boards and ends up being a top 10 selection. Um you know that is a general sort of uh, uh, criticism of the draft. Um, I do agree with it. I think that again, when you, when when a player shoots up in the draft based on a combine performance, most of the time it's not a good thing. Sometimes it is a good thing. Sometimes, and, and I try to. I, I think it amazes me. <laughs> it's funny because a lot of times when the guy shoots up in the draft process after a really good combine performance. Uh, people think of it as, as always a negative, which sometimes it isn't. Uh, sometimes it, it's a really good football player who t did really well in terms of data, did really well in terms of the combine, and is going to be a great NFL player. It's just that teams just didn't realize it up until the combine, you know. However, there are other times when this happens, and it's not a good thing, a la Justin Gilbert, a la Tavon Austin. Tavon Austin is a guy that uh, he definitely has some positives in terms of his data but he also has uh lots of negatives and i think uh, we're going to get into all those sort of areas um you know uh, a lot of the terms i'm going to be using today, if you're not familiar with the work that i do i'm going to leave terms in the, terms in the description so if you don't know what offensive market share data is you don't know what explosive lower body strength score is you don't know what speed uh, speed score is flexibility score all those kind of things i'll leave those in, in the uh, description um, so that you have that uh, information available so you can, um, you know, look at it and understand it if, you, if you're not very familiar with it, uh, which usually I try to explain it as I go along. Um, but for the most part, again, if you um, are familiar with the subject, check the description. If you still don't know, leave a comment below. But let's get into Tavon Austin in terms of how he looked in college based on his production, uh, his athleticism data coming out, and of course, how he actually looks at the NFL level up to this point. So when it comes to Tavon Austin, based on his data coming out of college, uh, based on his passing yardage mark share production, he had a 66.35 uh, passing yardage mark share production score. Uh, based on my data since 1969, that doesn't hit the five-time All-Pro threshold, the three-time All-Pro threshold, the three-time Pro Bowl threshold, or uh, but it does hit the long-term starter um, threshold. Um, so basically, the majority of wide receivers who became five-time All-Pro types were 85 or higher, three-time All-Pro were 80 or higher, and three-time uh, uh, Pro Bowl uh, were 68 or higher. Three-time All-Pro was 80 or higher, just to make the team. And then long-term service was 58 or higher. So Tavon Austin, based on his data of production, again, this is market share production, because I get this a lot. There's a lot of people that talk about wide receivers, and they go, oh, he was really productive. He had 1,000 yards. But... If you have a thousand yards in a five thousand yard offense, I mean that means that there were other wide receivers that were getting five thousand yards. Like th the reason for market share data in itself is it's trying to give you a good picture of how much of this offense did this wide receiver make up. You know how much of the passing yardage did this did this wide receiver make up? And uh, I don't think people really take into account this stuff, guys. I mean raw stats are bad to use uh, on their own because they can be misleading you know if you're a wide receiver and again if you're a wide receiver in a 5,000 yard offense 
um, and you get a thousand yards in that offense, you know, on paper. Um, sure, you might look at a thousand yards and go, wow, he's amazing. But when you look at it in the context of the offense he's in, it's not that amazing. And I think Tavon Austin is a big testament to this. Like, he's coming from a very spready offense that put up a ton of yards, and he didn't really make up a huge chunk of that offense. You know, he wasn't a dominant part of that offense. Um, and it shows up because he didn't perform like the dominant wide receivers did when it came to five-time All-Pro types or three-time All-Pro types or three-time Pro Bowl types. The types that you would want to take as a top 10 selection. Because again, this is a wide receiver that was taken in the top 10 and based on his passing yards, Mark share production, he should never been in the top 10. Uh, and then we get to his athleticism data which I think that there are a lot of people um, who, you know, again, and I, I say this all the time, um, to be a really good wide receiver in the NFL, you just need to have one above average athleticism, athleticism trait. Um, so you could have 54 or, or higher, essentially, whether that's explosiveness, speed, or flexibility. Um, Tavon Austin is not a bad athlete. I mean, he has a, <coughs> excuse me, he's a very good uh, speed score, obviously 90.86 out of 100. Uh, he's a very good flexibility score, 94.75 out of 100. But what did give me a lot of pause when I looked at his data profile is he had a 9.82 explosive lower body strength score. Um, his lower body strength is abysmal. Um, so essentially, he's a wide receiver that can run fast. Uh, he's fairly flexible, but he just doesn't have a lot of lower body power, a lot of lower body pop. Um, and this is why a lot of people, when they they criticize Tavon Austin a lot. It's that he's not really able to break tackles a lot. Um, he just doesn't have a lot of pop to his lower body, and that's because he just isn't a very strong wide receiver when it comes to his lower body. Because, uh, again, you know, the vertical and the broad jump um, is uh, specifically dealing with muscles that are in your lower body, you know, the muscles, uh, your, your quadriceps, um, you know, your hamstrings, you know, all those types of muscles uh, play a really big role in those... Uh, those tests. So Tavon Austin definitely can run fast and he definitely has really good flexibility, uh, but he just doesn't have a lot of power to go with it. And um, I'm not saying that that's a big reason why he failed 100%, but I am going to think it's part of it though, because you could be as fast or as flexible as you want, but if you're this significantly below average, I mean, 9.82 out of 100 uh, in explosiveness is not good, you know. Um, so I think Tavon Austin definitely is someone who, based on his athleticism data, had some deficiencies. You know, he had some areas of his game that were so low, it was blatantly uh, concerning. You know, it was a legit uh, concern. And this is why, again, I try to tell you guys, you need to be using data as a, and again, I might be saying this a lot this week, but as a holistic perspective looking at all the data in concert, you know, everything together, looking at it that way and making your evaluations based on all the data in front of you and not basing your entire evaluation based on one data point, you know. Um, and I know this sounds like that's what I'm doing with Tavon us right now, but I'm just saying that, you know, when you have a wide receiver that's really fast and really flexible, but it's significantly below average when it comes to exposed lower body strength, that to me is kind of a red flag. That's not exactly a wide receiver I want to take in the top 10, especially a wide receiver that already showed based on his production in college uh, that he didn't have significant pass yards mark share production. Um, and then when you actually get to his NFL production, um, and uh, when you look at Tavon Austin based on his NFL production, he's not been good. Uh, I mean, it shouldn't be surprising. Uh, based on his passing yards mark share production, from 2013 to 2016, the highest score he was able to record was a 69.27 out of 100, uh, which to put that into perspective, maybe layman's terms so you can get that, that's basically like a top 50 wide receiver performance uh, based in production. Um, so Tavon Austin is in no way performing um, like a top 10 wide receiver uh, at all. And the only areas where he was actually fairly decent uh, was things like overall market share, you know, had a 91.51 uh, in 2015, had an 82.04 in 2016, 
in uh, 2016. But a lot of that just had to do with just how bad the team was. I mean, the passing offense, um, you know, for the most part, Tavon Austin does a lot of different things. You know, he does some running back things and some wide receiver things. So that did kind of bump up his uh, his overall impact on the total offense. But when it comes to wide receivers, you really want to see them dominating when it comes to passing yardage. And that's something that Tavon Austin just has not been able to do. Um, he's not been able to dominate uh, when it comes to Marcus share data with passing yardage. And again, this is really eerie that a wide receiver that had, uh, again, just to double check, had a 66.35 passing yardage market share production score in college is still hanging out in the 60s in the NFL. So again, um, I Tavon Austin is just a guy that I, I think that He's another example of why you need to be looking at every single data point. I, I am not a guy. I will never be a guy. I mean, I, I, I never, I never want to say never, but I will never be a guy data-wise who will present you a data point where I just take a bunch of numbers, throw them into a pot, and then point, and then, you know, put out a number, and then boom, and then say, well, this is the number that will solve all our problems. You know, basic, and, and I do understand why people do this. You know, football is a very complex thing, and people want to try some. They want to find a simple solution to a very complex problem. But time and time again, you can't do that. You have to have a holistic approach when it comes to data. You have to be looking at all sides of the coin when it comes to data and production and all this other sort of stuff. And Tavon Austin is is an example of a wide receiver where not only was his production not ideal for a top 10 wide receiver. I mean, you're, you're taking a wide receiver top 10 who has virtually a 0% chance of becoming a multiple Pro Bowl wide receiver, let alone a multiple All-Pro wide receiver, let alone a five-time All-Pro wide receiver. So if a wide receiver has virtually a 0% chance of becoming a special wide receiver, why would you take that guy top 10? On top of the fact that he had significantly below average explosive lower body strength. Uh, you know, he was very fast, very flexible, but his explosive lower body strength was so low, it was a legit concern to me. As a data guy, I would I would have advised the team that this is not good. Like, this is kind of scary, you know. Um, you know, this is not ideal, to say the least. Like, yeah, he's fast, yeah, he's flexible, but he doesn't have a, a very good all-around... Uh, you know, a production, you know, sort of profile, maybe not production profile, but just his general strength is a concern. Um, so again, uh, I think with Tavon Austin, he just goes to show that you need to be paying attention to every single metric. Uh, you shouldn't just solely look at the 40 yard dash. You shouldn't just solely look at the flexibility, like the three cone and stuff like that. Um, you need to be looking at everything. You need to be looking at every facet and I think if people start doing that, if NFL teams start to look at everything when it comes to data, all the facets when it comes to data, they will start to hit on the position a lot more. And at the very least, they won't make mistakes like this anymore, taking a wide receiver who has virtually a 0% chance of becoming a multiple Pro Bowl type wide receiver in the top 10. Uh, so again, my name is James Coburn. You can find my work at draftcoburn.wordpress.com. You can also follow me on Twitter at Geometrics. And if you like this content and you want more content like this, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Uh, share this video as well if anybody that you know, and I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Peace.